On this episode of China Uncensored, ISIS, they've got lots and lots of guns. And where did those guns come from? You guessed it, a lot of them came from China. Welcome back to China Uncensored, I'm Chris Chappell. It turns out ISIS, the so-called Islamic State, has been getting a lot of its weapons from China, almost half. The good news is ISIS has taken a real licking in Iraq. This is Liberation Day in Iraq. ISIS has been nearly completely driven from Iraq, and politicians say that victory is close in the entire region. The Islamic State's military organization in the Levant is nearly totally defeated. I am confident that in the coming weeks, we can reach this military victory on the ground. But not so fast, says Conflict Armament Research, or CAR. They're an organization that uncovers how terrorist groups like ISIS get their weapons. They say that ISIS terrorists still pose a grave threat to regional and international security. One reason is that ISIS forces are in possession of advanced weapon systems, which will pose a threat to regional and international forces in the years to come. And thanks to that, ISIS still has the capacity to conduct insurgency and terrorism well beyond the region of the Middle East. CAR has been investigating how weapons are falling into the hands of terrorists, because that helps identify weak links in supply chains, ideally so those weak links can be fixed and guns kept away from the bad guys. This guy with a baseball hat is Damien Spleeters. He may look more like Freddie Mercury than Sherlock Holmes, but he's a 100% weapons detective. He looks for clues to find out where weapons come from. Nearly all military munitions, from bullets to missiles, are marked in some way. Illegal suppliers often try to destroy engravings or codes stamped into steel, but you can usually still identify where they came from. And, according to the Carr Report, nearly half of the weapons in the hands of ISIS fighters come from China. Yes, 43.5% of munitions documented in Iraq and Syria were made in China. They may not be the highest quality, but they're far more than from any other country. These are just some of the lethal toys ISIS supposedly had on its hands. T-55 tanks and the 122mm BM-21. These systems can fire multiple rockets at a second at a range of approximately 13 miles. Chinese HJ-8. HJ-8s are highly effective against armors, bunkers, and fortifications. Now, it's true that the country of origin, where weapons are made, is only half the story. It's also important how they get into the hands of terrorists. According to Carr, the ones to blame for illegal weapons getting into the hands of terrorists aren't always the ones that make them, but often the ones that buy them legally and then illegally supply them to unauthorized users. So what's crucial is not who makes it, but how it gets spread around. Take the U.S., for example. Even though only 1.8% of the weapons in ISIS hands are U.S. made, the United States has played a larger role. According to the report, the U.S. bought weapons mostly from Eastern Europe and diverted them to Syrian rebels who were fighting against the dictator of Syria. And then ISIS got them from the Syrian rebels. Our battlefield sleuths know this because they ran a trace on these weapons. Okay, this is how it works. When Spleeters or another Sherlock finds a gun used by ISIS fighters, he checks the serial number or other identifying features. It's like running the plates. Say it was made in the U.S. He sends the U.S. government a trace request. If the trace request gets approved, bang. You can map out the supply chain and find out where things went wrong. Thanks to traces approved by governments that are serious about keeping guns out of the hands of terrorists, we know that the United States bought a bunch of weapons and then diverted them to Syrian rebels. It's not always pretty because sometimes you get egg on your face. But knowing the truth helps the U.S. military keep weapons out of terrorist hands, which is their goal. But things look a little different when it comes to a few other countries, like China. You see, even though China made about half of the arms in ISIS hands, CAR investigators only know how about 7% of these got there. 
the Iraqi and Sudanese governments bought them from China. Then ISIS stole them. But how the other 93% or so of Chinese guns fell into ISIS hands, that's a mystery not even our tattooed Sherlock could solve. At least, not until the Chinese government agrees to run a trace. And so far, according to Carr, that just hasn't happened. I'm not saying the Chinese regime is covering something up. They would never do that. I'm just saying the Chinese regime has refused to cooperate. So it's nearly impossible to find out how ISIS got most of its Chinese weapons. Ah, the Chinese Communist Party, helping to make the world a safer place by dodging the bullet when it comes to accountability. And refusing to say where that bullet came from. Of course, China's not the only one. Russia has also refused trace requests, and the United States has refused a few as well. But at the end of the day, it's guns made in China far more than anywhere else that are ending up in the hands of terrorists. So what do you think about China refusing to provide critical information about how ISIS got its guns? Leave your comments below. Thanks for watching this episode of China Uncensored. Once again, I'm your host, Chris Chappell. See you next time. Don't be in the dark about how CCP weapons get into conflict zones. Visit ChinaUncensored.tv. We upload full half-hour episodes you won't see on YouTube. Learn about the shady practices of the Chinese regime before even world leaders do. ChinaUncensored.tv.